Do we have anything else you're bringing down? Just us. I told myself I wouldn't show up tonight But you bought it when I heard and changed my mind We don't got to act like this ain't right But you know we should Cause you been acting that ain't nothing but Bodies in a room, move My name is Ari Kepnes I'm at a company called Density uh, We build a device that uses computer vision to measure how buildings are used on a room level. So we measure entrances and exits so people can understand in real time utilization data and then make decisions and make that data available into other platforms. Another question is kind of interesting. It's not really tech related, but like what is the biggest complaint you get or you hear um, from occupants and, and things of that sort? Yeah, so another big piece that we've all seen, if you open up the news, has been around the complaints for open offices. And I think it's something that we should be thoughtful about um, because it's actually not about open offices. If you look at the history of the cubicle, for example, I mean, Herman Miller invented these panels that could be moved in 1967, it was called the Action Office. It had an exclamation point at the end. Uh, and the idea was that people would rearrange them, that they would do really cool things, that you'd have a, a kind of a seating arrangement like this where you could stand, you'd have a place to sit, um, and you could use these modular panels that were cheap and easy to move. Uh, and then what happened was, because the real estate industry saw that as a way to cut costs, instead of building people physical offices, they took those panels and they put them in the most cost-efficient way possible, which is the modern-day cubicle. Um, and then we saw a response to that, which was the open office. So the pendulum then swung in a, as a reaction to that, to the open office. And, you know, let's just get rid of these cubicles altogether. Um, and, and what's missing in both of those scenarios is a balance between understanding efficiency and experience. Um, a balance between understanding needs in a real way. The industry leaders, and, and I think a lot of the people who have talked today, have a much more nuanced approach to that. They, they understand those needs in both a qualitative way, a quantitative way, which is kind of where we, we come in, my company. And, and, and I think that's really what's missing, and, and that's where those complaints lie. So I had a really good time at the conference. Um, one of the things that I really appreciated was the interdisciplinary nature of it. So we had people on the planning side of design and construction. There was people who spoke about the overall employee experience. There was people who talked about facilities and operations. Um, and what was clear is that as an industry, all of the different parts of the business have to be working together to support what employees need. There's a way that people have thought for a long time about um, software development, agile development, continuous improvement, um, having a way to iterate test prototype. And we've talked about a lot in terms of how companies operate that work really well. But that idea, that mindset of using data to, to predict and then make a decision and then make a hypothesis and correct, you know, there's a way of that agile way of thinking that has not really been traditionally applied to the corporate real estate world. We're seeing that all come together holistically. Um, and what I'm most excited about is us living in a world where um, the built environment responds to human needs in a way that isn't big brother, but is actually um, allowing us to do what we want to do better and providing us what we need in a more seamless way.